by you and it's Gareth again we got cut off. Um, I'm not sure what's up with the phone line but we'll, we'll try and see how we go. Yeah. Um, I was told that you needed to speak to an entry clearance officer about some matters about your grandfather's application. I've just uh, familiarised myself with the case so I'm happy to take any questions or talk you through any uh, queries that you've got. Yeah. I'm um, not sure if it's an entry clearance officer that I need to speak to, but... A decision maker. Something like that, because... Yeah, yeah, so that's an entry clearance officer, yeah. Okay, I thought it would be a national, someone in the nationality department, Liverpool. Okay, so um, just, just before we carry on, mm -hmm. um, in terms of... Because your grandfather's outside the UK, mm -hmm. it would be entry clearance that he'd need in the first instance. Now, potentially, if he qualifies for right of abode, then potentially we could issue that. But what we can't do is issue citizenship to someone. Well, well, um, well, can I just stop you right there? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this language is really getting on my nerves. I'll be honest with you. Um, issue citizenship. My grandfather yeah. had a right of abode already, and he was a right. UKC on the so, 31st of December. So right of abode is different to citizenship. Oh, I know what they it, are. Right. But what I'm saying to you, my grandfather had a right of abode right. under 21C based on five years yep. residence in the United yep. Kingdom. Yeah. And he was a citizen of the UK and colonies on 31st December 1982. Under the BNA 1981, yep. all persons who had CUKC status and had a right of abode became yep. British citizens the following day under Section 11.1. They became British citizens under Section 11.1 of the BNA 1981. So yep. I don't see why my grandfather, being such a person, would need to be issued citizenship or granted citizenship. This is what I'm having difficulty with. Right, okay. So what we're saying is he's applying for right of abode rather than citizenship. No, well, here's the thing. If all persons with those ingredients became British citizens on the 1st of January 83, why is he even applying for any of those right. things? I mean, this is what I don't, I just don't get it. Right. So is he okay. not a British citizen then? Okay. Um, I believe from the information that you're telling me, I believe he probably is. Yes. But the thing is, we can't. So, the Windrush scheme, we can't issue passports under it. That that's not our place. So whilst he might qualify for a passport, um, that would need to be a paid application. However. What he can do under Windrush is apply for right of abode, and from the information that you're telling me, it sounds like he qualifies, um, and then that would result in right of abode being placed in his passport, and that would basically mean he had right of abode and would be able to travel freely to the UK. Yeah. yeah. And, and here's the thing. I mean, I've read, I've read the scheme and guidance when it first came out. I've read the second, uh, the addendum to it. And it says that you offer two things here. is either you acknowledge someone is already a British citizen and then issue them with the certificate or perhaps the status letter and or right of abode and or uh, indefinite leave to remain if the person doesn't qualify for the first two. So yeah. what my question is, mm -hmm. is why is my grandfather at 88 years of age having to go to a, a visa application center to, to enroll in biometric information when, as you said, from the evidence or from the way it sounds, he's already British. And I've put that evidence forward many times. So why does he have to be put through those processes? And British citizens do not give biometric information to the government. That's correct, actually. Uh, Ewan, I'm, I'm really sorry to do this, but do you mind if I just put you on hold for just a moment it's while I just double check something? Okay, yeah. thanks for that. Just bear with me. Hi, Ewan. Hi. Hi, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, so I basically checked with a manager and we've referred to the guidance and it, it does say that anyone applying under the Windrush scheme needs to submit biometrics. So that's the reason why. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? You're saying that's the reason why? Yeah, I'm saying the reason why is because under the Windrush scheme, it says in the guidance that um, people applying to regularise their uh, status 
mm-hmm. need to submit biometrics. Yes, indeed. People applying to regularize their status. And if a person is already a British citizen, according to the 1981 Nationality Act, having the right of abode and CUKC status on the 31st of December 82, they are not applying to regularize their status. What the Home Office needs to look at is the evidence on application. He was born in St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts and Nevis did not get independence until after 83, September that year, which means he was a CUKC. He's been in the UK. He came to the UK in 1955. He has children born here. I submitted one of his uh, children's birth certificate with his name on it. His passport reissued in London in 66 and other evidence. And you need to look at that and see that he had five years residence in the UK and so had the right to vote. I think the issue here is the submission of biometrics or not. From, from the information you're telling me, I'm not for one moment disagreeing um, with what you're saying. I mean, obviously, we need to see the evidence first. But what? the angle that I'm coming at it from is not one saying that he doesn't qualify. It's one saying the scheme guidance says that biometrics must be submitted. Yeah, the scheme guidance is not law and so you're forcing british citizens to to um biometric um enrollment when you you're not supposed to do that you you can do that if someone is applying to become british but if this is confirmation of status and he's already british how can you then force him to submit biometric information this is what i'm saying he's 88 years of age and he cannot travel to the vac the last i was told was that someone would send a team up from Toronto to Kitchener to do that. And I didn't really have a problem with it. The, I, I do have a problem with the fact that you're forcing a British citizen to enroll in biometrics when other British citizens don't have to do that. He's been a British citizen since 83. Well, what I can do, you and is flag it up at a higher level and get that to you as soon as I can. Please do. That's acceptable to you. Right, please, okay. please, because it, it's... I mean, it's, it's not right. The second thing is, my mother's cousin, who just got a letter a couple of weeks ago from you guys, saying that you're granting him British citizenship and sending him for a ceremony in that, in that respect. Um, I don't have the case number in front of me, but he's also from St. Kitts and came here from the, in 1960. He also had the right of a vote. And I don't appreciate the language that suggests that he's being granted citizenship as if he wasn't that all the time. Uh, I, I understand where you're, you're coming from. I think what, what perhaps people should be making clear is the fact that at the moment, by your own admission, they don't have a document to confirm it. It's certainly not. In the circ- Obviously, I'm, I'm commenting on the circumstances that you're telling me, but mm-hmm. I appreciate what you're saying completely. On the circumstances that you're stating, if we can verify them, these are people who already yeah. have the right of vote. Mm-hmm. I totally appreciate that. Um, but the issue is that they don't have the documents, and obviously the scheme is about correcting that. Um, but I can certainly raise the query at a higher level um, right. and then get back to you. Right, because, I mean, I've submitted before by email and other other ways, even when I made applications years ago. His, his passport issued in London, his CUKC passport issued in London in '66 by the Foreign Office. Mm-hmm. And he was here already 10 years before that. And longer, so it's it's just ridiculous to see that he's being treated in such a way. All, not all countries became independent. For instance, you know, you have Grenada and Saint Lucia. They became independent in the 70s, so they may have lost CUKC status. And you may also know that Antigua and Belize retained that status yeah. because be, and exactly Saint Kitts, yeah. and Saint Kitts. Yeah, yeah, I am aware. Yeah. Okay, um, leave it with me, you, and then I'll take that forward. I mean, obviously, I can't guarantee what the outcome is going to be, and I can only go with what I'm told by, you know, senior managers. But I, I will we'll tell you, senior managers, because, yeah. mm-hmm. because I do see your point, mm-hmm. and I will raise it. Okay, thank you very much. I just, I just don't want to give a guarantee at this stage, but rest assured, I do understand where you're coming from, and I'll put it forward. Okay, thank you very much. Tell me your name again, please. It's Gareth. Gareth, all right. I'll be in touch with you as soon as I hear anything. But, I mean, the the email address that you have for us is windrushvisainquiries 
at fco.gov.uk, is that right? Yeah, that's. I received yeah, an yeah. email from that this morning, yeah. Yeah, that's our team. So if you need to contact me, you can reach me uh, at that, uh, that email address and I can yeah. give you a call back. But I can assure you, I'll raise it and then the second I hear anything, uh, mm. whatever the decision, I'll get back in touch and let you know. But rest assured, I do understand what you're saying. Completely. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. But the next thing well, is your team doesn't have a number. That's a bit of a disparity because the people in the UK then have a number to call the Windrush team, but the people outside the UK don't have a yeah. number to call for the international so team. So obviously the help desk has been set up in the UK to help with that. But because we're talking about a case now where obviously, I think it was you that was interviewed about your grandfather's case, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So obviously now it's reached that stage where although there's not an application formally received yet, I, I'm aware that you've filled in the online application form. So it's kind of with the caseworking unit. So the way that we operate is that if you need a call back, we're happy to do that, mm -hmm. but we don't want to release a phone number. I mean, you can rest assured that we will get back to you if you email us, as you've probably noticed. And okay. obviously now you're dealing with me, I'm fully aware of the situation and I'll raise it. But um, if there's anything else, you know, or if you haven't heard from us for a while yeah. and, and you want to get in touch, by all means, contact me at that email address and I'll get back to you. All right, Gareth, I'll leave it with you. All right, yeah, no problem. Cheers. Thanks for your time, Ewan. Okay, no bye -bye. worries. Thank you. Bye.